those things. Some of them said they got away from aggressiveness last year. That seems to be a theme of yours. Why is that so important for heading into this season? Well, it's defense. So I think that uh, everybody across the nation is coaching defense, is talking aggressiveness. So that's a good mission statement. I think the methods going into it are the important thing. Gauge how much to throw at them at a given time and when when you have to back off a little or simplify. It's, uh, it's like a good a question. In a, in a grade school, if the class is not getting it, what do you do? Yeah. So um, as you look at an install page, and we we did put a lot on their plates in, in early installs and you just have to make a good judgment based on where you are after four or five instances. And it may mean that you've got to adjust moving forward what you're doing. So um, again, that's just an evaluation of our entire group, where they are, and uh, whether it's a wise decision to just kind of slow down Make sure they're getting enough, getting enough reps. And what's been installed, because maybe they're struggling with a particular scheme. Have you had that experience where you made a conscious decision? I've got to slow down, or conversely, you guys are picking it up. I can, no, I can go I, faster. I've never been there. Yeah. yeah, most of the time it's there's a point in time where you say, you know, I think we're doing enough. I think we need to slow it down. And that's been true throughout my career, most mm -hmm. places I've been. Typically, when does that happen? Is it in the spring, or is it now? Or? Um, I think I think you worry more about it right now than you did in the spring. A little bit more safeguard moving forward in the spring because you know the way summer set up now in training camp, they're going to hear this again. Right. But right now, if they don't get it, then it's. I think it's more important to you know, to back up, back off, slow it down. Mm -hmm. Are you at a point now with the season not that far away that you're comfortable with the pace or do you feel like you have to adjust how much you uh, implement? I think they've handled it well, but there, there's a little bit of, you know, caution mm -hmm. at this point in time. And of course, we've got to make sure that we – you know, grow in the next uh, week or so with all the situations of football that we still got to work on. So we still got a full plate relative to information and, and philosophy relative to even situations of the game that uh, we've got to start working on. So as we work on that, it, then it becomes a question of do we hold off on maybe this other particular defense or install that we had planned. Not, not every player is going to get it at the same rate. That is correct. How much does that play into who plays? I mean, if there are eight guys who are on the right page and three who are not. It just depends if they're production players. Yeah. You know, a high production player that maybe is, is struggling. You know, high production player is going to play. Mm -hmm. So then you have to make wise decisions relative to how you schematically treat him. As you all look at the game against Alabama, do you all have a different approach to how you play against each quarterback that they might throw at you? I don't think so. No. And then, okay, so what about your uh, your, your middle linebacker position? It's obviously Dorian Etheridge, the guy next to him. And is there anybody standing out that might be able to take that, that role? Um, we have a lot of guys ascending right now in all positions, and that would be true with all our linebackers. We have a, guy, a lot of guys that are ascending players right now, so um, we're keep it, keeping it competitive daily. Um, he's pretty clear cut, Dorian. You know that he's a starter for us, and he's really the communicative leader of our defense. But uh, all our other players are in a daily competition, and they're all getting better. The, the freshman role. How are you guys going to handle that? On you know how you you know implement new guys in? Are you going to play them early? Or are you going to evaluate on the practice field and just see if they can help you in the game? Or well, that'll be a, that'll be a question to ask Coach Petrino. But uh, at the same time, uh, they're being evaluated, and 
and uh, you still have to determine whether or not uh, they are ready to contribute to winning efforts on Saturday. If they are, then again, that's coach's decision relative to where that goes. <laughs> Talk about your, your time at Oklahoma State and sort of, you know, what went on for you during that time and, <laughs> and, and, and how it may help you, you know, moving forward. Into well, it was a healthy, it was just a healthy thing for me to kind of step back. Um, I really appreciated all the people at Oklahoma State. Mike Gunn is tremendous. Glenn Spencer, the D coordinator, was tremendous. So more than anything, it was, it was just very healthy uh, in that environment. And uh, the way that organization is run, the players were awesome. So for the most part, that's true. I think there were some things schematically that we did um, that um, in the college game were good. You're always learning. You're always picking up on new things. So there's a number of things that I really like that we that we did at Oklahoma State. So there was a learning part of it too. So healthy and some good learning. It was a enjoyable year. What made it healthy? Just just the whole and the overall environment. Or? Yeah, I think you know Coach Gundy uh, does a great job there with with the culture at Oklahoma State. Really good culture. Players, coaches enjoy coaching. Players enjoy playing. Uh, very well done. When you come into a 